Hey guys, Alex from Fast Fitness Tips. Today we're talking about the science of treadmills, something I weirdly I find a really interesting area. Yeah, I have been asked quite recently to try and solve this mathematically. And if you don't want to hear about the science, you just want to hear about the solutions, you can skip to this end point in the video now. And I'll tell you, uh, we have produced a spreadsheet that will enable you to do a calculation to work out the comparative, let's say, equivalence from running on the treadmill to running outside. Now, to be honest, that is a really complicated thing to solve, more complicated than it first appears. And I'm going to talk you through that really simply. But to do that, I've got a thought experiment for you, a thought experiment. Follow me on this one, guys. Here's three scenarios. Which one of these is going to use most energy? Okay, so scenario one, you've just got a guy running up a 5% incline over, let's say, one kilometer. Let's say it takes him 10 minutes. So scenario two, then, is a guy doing the exact same incline on a treadmill, 5%. He runs 10 minutes over one kilometer. Okay, so what's scenario three? Scenario three is a guy on a treadmill. Yes, the treadmill's inclined at plus 5%, and he's going to run for 10 minutes exactly the same. But hang on, we put the treadmill on the back of a truck, and the truck, over that 10 minutes, goes up the same vertical elevation to the end point of where the guy running up would have got. Do you follow me? So the truck actually has the treadmill on the back with the guy on the back, and it's going to the top of the hill at exactly the same 10 minutes that it would have taken to complete the run. Which of those three would end up costing more energy, if you like? Answer coming up in a second. So yes, today I'm talking about running an incline on a treadmill. Why am I so interested in running on an incline? Well, in, a, in some ways it's a more efficient workout because for a start, you're burning more calories per minute generally. Obviously, if you go in at a higher incline, but at the same speed that you would have gone on the flat. So you can have a basically more intense or compressed workout, which is sometimes attractive to me, being time crunched. The other thing is you can obviously vary intensity, and that's important. Just like you want to vary your incline, vary riding on hills, you wouldn't ride on the level on your bike the whole time, would you? In fact, outside, you know, there's loads of hills and bumps as you discover. That's a massive shock if you're riding indoors all the time, and then you transition to riding outside. So actually, even if you're running, you do want to run up some gradients to get your body used to what you're going to run outside. Even if you're not a hill runner, a fell runner, you might want to take into account the slightly different workout. And in fact, that's another benefit of running on an incline treadmill. You get a slightly different muscle group activation. It's been studied in science, but basically you get more calf activation. You get more quad activation. You know, there's a different muscle structure activation that's been studied by EMGs. Now, this video, in a way, is all about working out the equivalence of running up an incline as to running in the flat. And, you know, some sources, a lot of sources say it's 1%, like a flat rate. It's 1% incline on the treadmill is equivalent to running outside on the flat. But if you think about it for a second, it can't be a standard fixed figure for everyone. For a start, the energy consumption is going to be different at different speeds. You know, if you're going slower and slower... You know, imagine it going a walking pace or very slow walking pace. The difference between walking on the treadmill really slow and walking outside really slow is going to diminish as the energy expenditure approaches zero. You know, the two are going to be equivalent because the zero point has to touch, you know, on the two graphs, the zero point has to be the same. To put it simply, if you're not moving, you're not doing any work on the treadmill. You're similarly, if you're not moving outside, you're not doing any work outside, are you? I was thinking, how could you measure this scientifically? So one way we could do this would be to go off heart rate, for example. So if you had a big enough sample, you could get runners to run, let's say, 5K. Let's say they do their 5K, you know, standard time outside. Get them to do that five times. And then get them to do the same run indoors, but try to approximate the same effort, the same total heart rate over that uh, run. But obviously, there's so much variation in that equation, it would be really difficult to do it. Another way I thought about doing it would be to use a tool where it measures your actual power. And I actually have one. I've got the stride-based foot 
tab runner, which you put on your shoe or there's another one that goes around your chest and it attempts to measure your running power. Now, I haven't yet got to terms with this device. I know it's been out a long time now, but the point is there are some problems. It actually says it's not fully accurate when trying to work out your watts used on the treadmill. So it, it sounds really attractive to use a running power meter to work out the equivalent grades, but it actually doesn't really work, at least not one I've seen. If you guys have seen a different one that does work on the treadmill, please let me know about that. Now, there are some studies that have looked at another metric, and I think this is also attractive, which is vertical oscillation. You would think like wasted energy is effectively, you know, represented in your vertical oscillation. And there is some truth in that. So if you look at the literature, studies have shown that there's less vertical oscillation when running on a treadmill versus running outside. Now, have a think about this for a second. How can that be? Because the treadmill, often the treadmill design is designed to compress and return some energy. So it's designed to be, you know, let's say a little bit bouncy. That's actually giving you cushioning in your normal run. And you do want that on a treadmill. Otherwise, it would be pretty harsh. Now, I know treadmills vary here and this is going to get complicated, but there is some give in a treadmill, which is around about, you know, 10, 20 30 millimeters or more and you can see that on a video if you look at the side of a runner running on the treadmill you can see them going up and down on that treadmill but actually that doesn't mean their vertical oscillation let's say measured at their head is exaggerated because they're compressing the treadmill and that energy is being returned so that's quite interesting what it pretty much means is that the vertical oscillation is less on a treadmill because the energy is being temporarily transferred to the treadmill and then transferred back. You know, there's a rebound phenomenon. And this is the same kind of principle that's being used to develop a lot of cutting edge running shoes now where the soles are designed to return energy. And an example of that would be the Elliot Kipchoge attempt at the world record when he did the Nike Breaking 1, Breaking 2 project. Nike designed a shoe, I think, to give him maximum energy return. And I think they said it would give him 1% extra energy return over his marathon, which doesn't sound like much, but adds up to a lot when you're trying to grab those final few seconds. Okay, so let's return to our thought experiment and address the question of whether it's exactly the same to run on a treadmill versus outside. And in particular, incline. Where does incline come into it? Because some people say, oh, you're running on an incline on the treadmill. But if you look at the runner, you're not going anywhere. So obviously it's easier. No additional energy is spent going up against gravity, so to speak, in inverted commas. But what's wrong with this is you're taking the perspective, like a static perspective of the observer, rather than the energy expenditure of the runner. OK, think about it another way. If you put your bike on a treadmill and put it on an incline, is going to come off the back and you're going to have to spend energy which is in addition to the belt speed combating the incline of the treadmill right it's not just you know the incline of the treadmill is going to make a difference you can see that can't you from the kind of bike thought experiment or here's another one put um, a rower on a fast moving river and ask him to row against the tide he might not be moving anywhere but he's expending energy to stay still because the river's going by. Now imagine the river having, you know, a lot of energy, you've got to expend more energy to stay still. So if we come back to our thought experiment of the three scenarios, which one expends most energy? The runner running up 5% grade over 10 minutes, one kilometer. The guy on the treadmill or the guy on the treadmill on the back of a truck. The truth is they're all approximately the same. The truck has done the work elevating the treadmill and the person on it to the top of the hill. But both runners on the treadmill have done the same work as the person going to the top. Now I said approximately the same. So if you want to be clear, it's not exactly the same because there are some, let's say subtle differences between inside and outside. One of them is pretty obvious, wind resistance, you know, or aero resistance. It's exactly the same for a runner as it is with a cyclist. You know, you're having to move the air out of the way and the air density, for example, makes a difference to that. The runner's going much slower than the typical cyclist, but nevertheless, there is an effect. Now that effect is almost meaningless if you go in, let's say, below six, seven, eight kph. But if you're going at a fast jog or definite run or definite sprint, you know, it makes quite a difference. 
So if you check out this article on Runner's World, you see that this was calculated for Chipchoge's uh, attempt at the marathon, both breaking one and breaking two. They factored in the vital importance of having paces, not just uh, keeping you going at the right speed, but actually drafting. And the effect of the paces was quite significant, as you can see in this article. In addition to that, there was some effect of having the timing car ahead. And altogether, the, uh, the effect on the time apparently brought the, the world record attempt time down from about two hours and five to around about two hours and one. By the way, just after that, you know Chip Chogi broke the actual world record in Berlin. I think, I think it was two hours and 25, wasn't it? And actually he ran that with Pacers, who provided a little bit of drafting as well. But he ran a huge proportion, I think nearly half of that marathon, solo against the wind. So it makes that an unbelievable and pretty fair effort, to be honest. Now, actually, you can calculate aero drag in our uh, upcoming calculator, which I'm going to show you in just a second. So returning to the point about why outdoors and indoors are not exactly the same is this question of aero drag. And this is built into our calculator. But you can turn that aero drag on or off if you want to calculate it like compared to two indoor positions. The other reason that they're not exactly the same is the obviously surface undulation. So of course, you know how difficult it is to run on mud or run on, for example, grass or run on wet ground or run on sand. You know, that was horrendous. If you ever try and run on wet sand, it's a nightmare. And that's because just unlike the treadmill, it's a, it's a damped surface which doesn't rebound. You know, unlike the treadmill itself, which, as we've said, rebounds and gives you some energy back. Some people call that, by the way, the coefficient of restitution. OK, so now we come on to the question of how we can actually crack this mathematically, how we can calculate it. And I want to give a shout out to two excellent sites. One is this Cody Beals site, codybeals.com. Check out this article from 2014. It's a little bit old now, but it's a really nice examination of the physics of running where he goes into how to work out the equivalence. And that's basically what we've done, the equivalence of running at an incline or running at a certain speed indoors versus outdoors. The physics of that are all here, as are some example calculations. And one headline is the slower you go, the smaller the incline has to be to make an equivalence indoors or out. So for example, if you were thinking it's 1%, i.e. 1% on the treadmill gives you equivalent to running outside, Cody Beale's calculation is, yeah, that's pretty much correct. If you happen to be running 15 kph or around you know, nine or so miles per hour. If your pace is different to that, then it's a different grade. You know, that's 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 one of the take homes from this. the other shout out is on physics stack exchange is a really nice example of how to work out the energy used on a treadmill. You know, there's the calculation for gravity. There's the calculation for air resistance. There's the additional calculation for a non-uniform service. And there's a calculation for springiness of the landing, i.e. what is your treadmill bounce, which we've put into the calculator. So without further ado, guys, here is our calculator and you can find the link to this down below. By the way, if you don't have Google Sheets, Google Sheets is necessary to log into this. You have to look at the top left. It says view only. Then you have to click the drop down and then select edit rights. But if you don't have a Google account or can't register with Google for any reason, we are converting this into a app based version, which uh, our friends at Cycling Apps are kindly working on right now. And I'll post that link when it's ready as well. So here's the Google Sheets version. I'll very quickly talk you through this. You put in your running experience. The reason that's needed is because running economy varies with your experience, just like with riding experience. You know, if you're a beginner, you're less efficient. You've got lower FTP, etc. It's the same with running. Click on your units, then tell me whether you want to build in aerodynamic drag. That's really to compare indoors and outdoors. Look at your treadmill, see if you can measure that ideally, but if you can't measure it, just do a ballpark. Is it firm? Is it slightly firm, neutral, springy? Or is it very springy, for example? You know, there's some, there's some grades based on millimeter deflection. Put your weight in, either kilograms or pounds, and then put your treadmill stats in. So put the distance you ran, put the time it took in minutes and seconds, and then it will tell you treadmill speed. Sometimes the treadmill itself is not fully accurate, by the way. And then key, put in your grade. And yes, you can put in exact percentage into the calculator if you want. 
So it will tell you then how far you effectively ran up vertically in kind of vertical feet or meters, the approximate calories you used in this run, and the differences in aero drag between uh, indoors and outdoors. And then here's the clever bit, and then it will combine all that together and it will tell you what's the equivalent, if your treadmill is set at that grade and you're running at that speed, what's the equivalent for running outside at zero? You know, in terms of energy, would you go further? Like if you're running, so if you're running at 12.9 MPH in, indoors at plus 5.5, it will be the equivalent of running 14.72 MPH outside or it would be the equivalent of running not 26.21 i.e. marathon, it would be equivalent to running 29.85 if you went at the same speed. Does that make sense? So we can have a little fun with this. We can put in Chip Chogi's actual stats, you know, 13 miles an hour, what's the equivalent? And you can see he has about 13% aero drag. Well, that's what I calculate on his body in addition to all the other factors. Or we could put in bolts, and if you put in bolt speed is average over 100 meters, 9.58 seconds. It will be somewhere in the region of, what, 23 miles an hour, 23.35 miles an hour. And he would have something like 23% drag on his body, the aero drag. You can work it out from first principles, just like you would as a cyclist. Okay guys, that's a lot of science and a lot of detail about <laughs> running on treadmills how to work out the equivalence of running indoors and outdoors. It's a problem I've kind of scratched my head about for actually a few years now. So I'm glad to get some kind of solution. Tell me if you don't agree with it. Tell me if you think we've left something out. If we did have a mass of data, heart rate data or, or power use data from runners who've done the same run indoors or outdoors, I would be able to refine these calculations. The spreadsheet's out there for free guys. Everything's there for you. Tell me what you think. Boom, guys. Treadmill running versus outdoor running. What's your opinion? Okay, guys, this is Coach Alex from Fast Fitness Tips. Have a great run or have a great ride, and I'll see you next time.